Oh my god. What's behind the red... Oh, hold on, wait a minute. Ha, <laughs> there we go. What's behind the red door? It turns out not very much. It's not the house that's haunted. It's your son. There's something in there. There's something wrong with Dad. These things are bad. family has been through a lot together. You told me that when I was 10, I was in a coma, but I don't remember being sick. We're ready to forget. Ever since then, I see crazy stuff with my dreams. <sighs> Those are not dreams. It's happening again. Something is following us. I'm going to need you to remain still. Hello? Hello? The further you travel, the riskier the journey becomes. Hello everybody out there and welcome to this, another edition of a Late Night Screen Review. This week, we're looking at Insidious, The Red Door. Directed by Patrick Wilson and distributed in every major cinema out there right now. Uh, Insidious is the next chapter in the Insidious series by Blumhouse Productions. Um, and what's it about? Well, Insidious, The Red Door, tells the story of, of Josh, who's the father in of the last two or three or four films um and his son dalton who is now fully grown well fully grown he's he's, he's off to college he's leaving the family uh, at this point um some minor spoilers are ahead folks so just fair warn um so at, at the point in the story where we come back to to josh who's the dad and then and, and dalton is the son um the family being plagued by ghosts for years and it's kind of haunted the father and the son at the same time. They have this kind of weird connection. They can kind of ghost walk, astro project into the, the ghost realm and they've been haunted by ghosts and chased by ghosts. Um, so it, it's put a big toll on the family. When we come into this new story, the uh, mum and dad have split up because we can't have a nice, round, well-rounded family in a horror film. But, you know, I'll let that off because it does kind of suit I guess a horror a horror theme movie more than more than most films. Um so kind of having a divided family does work. Anywho. So the story is uh, uh Dalton's going off to college. Uh in, in the opening few seconds of the movie we get a very snap cut quick scene that the 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 whole family have agreed that they're going to put the hypnosis on dad and Dalton to completely wipe out any memory of their astro projectual adventures into the into the afterlife. Um, so they've completely had that erased and forgotten about it. Uh, Mum and dad have later on been divorced and now Dalton's off to college. Uh, and obviously what's going to happen? Uh, the ghosts are back, baby. And um, the, the they slowly start to kind of go insane uh, separately because obviously they're, they're, dad's away and, and, and Dalton's at college. And it's kind of them unravelling what the, the, the truth behind their kind of memory block and, and how that manifests. And the, and the ghosts are... The ghost cannot leave these these this family alone, uh, seemingly, and it's just everything that flows from that. Um, so, what did I think of this film? Well, guys out there, if you are a Blumhouse fan and you like that formula, that very formulaic formula at this point, um, then this is just another one of those kinds of films. Um, for me, like this film doesn't do anything extraordinary. It doesn't do anything different whatsoever from that old, uh, the old formula. So like all the Insidious films and the Annabelles and all those kind of films. This is just another one in the series. Um, I always feel like the, these sets of films, these Blumhouse movies, they're like the kind of horror community's version of the Fast and Furious movies. You know what you're going to get. 
Uh, they're very silly, they're very formulaic, um, but they kind of entertain. Um, I didn't go in with high expectations and I didn't leave feeling like I'd seen a masterpiece of horror, but I was mildly entertained for 90 minutes. And that's kind of all I'll be able to say in terms of uh, a favourable review of this movie. Um, the tropes are all there. Uh, I kind of feel like these movies, uh, and especially the Insidious films, are kind of like a, just a love letter to all horror. So all the horror tropes are there. It takes a little bit from Poltergeist, from The Shining, from uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street and just kind of smushes them all together. We we see the iconography from like every horror movie ever made, especially ghost movies. So like there's the contortionist actor who's a sort of ghost coming out from under the bed there's scary dolls there's creepy music there's lots of smoke it's just it's it's everything we've ever seen in any horror movie since the 1930s just smushed together into a movie and in a way there's something quite charming about that i mean this film is just formulaic it's jump scare heavy it's very quiet Look that way, nothing. Look that way, nothing. Look that way, nothing. But look that way, it's something and it's there and it's in your face. Ah! Uh, and and that's, that's kind of it. Um, again, it, it doesn't do anything different. It sets up this really cool dynamic between the son and the dad and they've kind of become divided. And you kind of, throughout the film, you, you hope and you want to see as an audience member, these two guys come back together make up big emotional kind of oh son i love you and dad I, I i forgive you for all those things and it kind of bails on its own story towards the end the film kind of plods along you know as as all these kind of like blumhouse films do uh, but then towards the end it just kind of drops its conceits and it drops its kind of storylines and just kind of goes let's just get this film done very quickly and out the door um the the kind of monster the demon the antagonist just isn't really there there's kind of no antagonist really it's just kind of vague scary monsters under the beds and chasing down the corridors and things and that's kind of it um it really ducks out on that what's behind the red door what is the red door about don't worry absolutely nothing i mean really it it, it doesn't really mean a thing it's just a piece of iconography in the movie and that's about it so as i say like this film sets up some stuff and you kind of think, oh, I can't wait to see the resolution. And then by the end of the movie, it's like, oh, there is no resolution. They just kind of end the movie as quickly as they possibly can. Um, so the film falls apart towards the end, towards the like the last third of the movie. Um, up until then, it's just a generic Blumhouse scare film. Uh, again, if you're if you're a fan of those films, and obviously I've no judgments if you are, I do find entertainment in them. If I'm honest, like I again, I guess it's like the the Fast and Furious kind of uh, thing where you just kind of just go see the next one um if you're a fan of those kind of films those kind of modern jump scare movies you're gonna love this movie it's it's again it's just the it's the next one along which is fine um if you're looking for some high art if you're looking for some serious well-written depthful characterized horror don't go see this movie you're gonna leave angry and upset i was kind of ambivalent i was just kind of like yeah it was okay it's a shame that they didn't kind of fulfill some of the some of the plot lines towards the end and kind of really flesh that out um it's a shame that there wasn't really an antagonist it was just kind of like rah uh, monsters um because it could have really it could have really done uh, well with those with those conceits but it just decided to not bother um but if you're just a casual movie goer casual horror fan go watch it you'll enjoy it it's a good 90 minutes bit of popcorn and and enjoy it uh again if you're more of a serious fan of horror then i would give this one a miss so that is my review of insidious the red door that means absolutely nothing um so uh, until next week guys stay safe stay scared and we will see you soon bye <laughs>